Hey guys, so Abby and I, we're up here at the Henry Ford Museum. This is our last major stop on our big haul road trip. And we've been really excited to uh, come and see this place. We've had so many people reach out and say, you've got to go visit the Henry Ford Museum. And uh, we're finally here. We're finally getting to see it. I've got the camera. I'm going to go through the, the machinery area. I'd like to get some video of the, uh, the, the vintage machines that they have on display to share on the channel with you guys. There's a lot here to see at the museum, so I don't want to make a video of the entire thing. But we want to kind of focus for A-Bomb 79 on some of the manufacturing and uh, maybe some of the other really cool industrial uh, stuff they have in here as well. But this is simply amazing. If you just look over here, you can see these beautiful vintage machines over here on display. But there's a whole area here on the Made in America exhibits. And uh, we're going to go through it. I'm going to share some of these machines with you. So let's go get to it. Wow, All right. look at that picture. Yeah, that's what I was just pointing out. <laughs> so look at this machine shop here. And shaft grinding shop. You see all of the belts. All the machines are running off of the line shafts. They're all running down and running all those machines. So you can see they're building crankshafts here. Gauge blocks. Gauge blocks. <laughs> I would never have known what that was before, by the way. Really? Johansson. Johansson gauge blocks. Another really great photo of the factory or the shop that was building the components for the engines. We got some great photos here showing the assembly line. And there's one there, the men that were putting the engines together, building the engines. They got a good movie there to watch about it too. And you can see the whole exploded view of the uh, what the factory looked like, the assembly line. All right, so Abby's gone ahead of me and she has already found the machines. So let's come in here and check out the machine shop area. Do you know what this is? It's a milling machine. Is it a milling machine? It looks like a planer from here, but let's see. I cheated because I saw Ingersoll milling machine. Okay, so it's built, it's built like a planer. So it's gonna have a milling head on here though instead. Yep. Okay. That is cool. So you have the um, these are the milling heads right here. And they also have a horizontal setup. That's this guy right here. He goes across. You can see the cutter right there. There's several of them. So these are your rotational cutters. So that is milling the top of the components that they have on top of this bed right here. And then this one, so this one's spinning. And this cutter is cutting grooves or slots or whatever feature is mounted, whatever kind of cutter is mounted on that arbor is cutting into the, the uh, the engine as well. This looks like part of the engine blocks, I believe. What a beautiful machine. The Ingersoll Milling Machine Company. That is, uh, that is awesome. Yeah. All right, so we have a grinding machine over here, cylindrical grinder. This is what is gonna grind your crankshafts and that's what is in there right there. There's your crankshaft. The grinding wheel is right there. It's Norton. This Norton one's Norton. Grinding company. Yep. Norton. So how do you say that? Wooster. <laughs> so however I say it is wrong. So our buddy Lance says that uh, it's just Wooster. 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 Like that. Kind of like rooster, but Wooster. <laughs> The beautiful. first high production cylindrical grinding machine invented and designed by Charles H. Norton. It's presented by the Norton Company in Worcester, Massachusetts. Incredible. That is really cool. So I believe how this machine is, uh, was used. You have your vertical attachment here rotating. 
you have your horizontal attachment up in there. Well, it's really hard to see that. I need to put the light on. And I think what it was doing, it was, it was doing two operations at once. The horizontal cutter is decking the top of the block here. And then the horizontal cutter that's rotating this way is machining the radius channel in there for the crankshaft to lay in. So two operations at one time on one machine. Keeping it efficient. And they would put, yeah. so they would stack as many blocks on here as they can and run it, it would probably run it through, I don't know, once or twice. Yeah. I would think one time, run it through to the other side, take them all off, bring it back, put a bunch of new blocks on there, run it through, and that's how, that's how this was uh, done here. And what's just amazing is that this was just one system of many, many, many yeah. machining systems that were needed to build each component right. of the car or the engine, all the mechanical features of it. And then this is gonna be a yeah, multi, multi spindle drill right here. This one's from Holland, Michigan. Really? Yeah. So this would be set up with a series of cutters and they would all cut at one time. So whatever part that was on there, they would mount it on the table and this would come down, drill all the holes and come back up at one time. Again, efficient. Western Machine Tool Works, Holland, Michigan. Drills up to eight holes at one time. Incredible. Very cool. Look at that. Gates. Timken Roller Bearing Company. So they're going to highlight a lot of different manufacturing in, in here, not just the machining, which, uh, which I really enjoy. But look at this. So cast iron stoves, furnace, sewing machines. Looks like we have uh, a brick making machine. H. Brewer and Company, Tecumseh, Michigan. I don't think I've ever seen a brick making machine before. Electroplating dynamo. That's interesting. Everything was so beautifully made back in the, these days. They put a lot of effort into making it look elegant and beautiful. Insulation braiding machine. That's this guy. Well, I know what this is. This is a printing press. Which I will be trying to find one of these when I get my shop. Abby wants a printing press. Job printing press, paper ruling machine. So this is a glass press here. I wonder why it's on wheels that way. That's interesting. That I don't know. I obviously, think that to, would make it unstable. Well, obviously to make it mobile, maybe they needed to move it around in the, in the facility. Obviously, yes. Very well preserved. This looks like a uh, turret lathe to me. Automatic screw machine. Screw machine. Okay. Eighteen ninety-five. All right. It's a. That is. It's Pratt and Whitney. Makes sense. That's what it looks like. It looks like a turret, but yeah, a screw machine. So. This guy right here makes a lot of uh, small parts very quickly. This is, most people understand what CNC machines are now. This is the predecessor to CNC machines. And you see it was completely flat belt driven. The belt would come down from the top and drive right here. This guy is probably moves to move the belt to one side or the other. A lot of ingenuity went into stuff like this right here, man. It would have been amazing to see that work. You have cutters here, you have cutters there. So it does a bunch of operations and it cuts the part off. Falls off, I guess it goes down into here and you collect your parts. And then there's another milling machine right here. Is that for oil? Look that how is. beautiful that yeah. is. Yeah, I've always wanted to make something like that. I think you should. That would be a great project. Yes. This is brown and sharp. That is a very, very early brown and sharp milling machine right there. 
1895. Oh, you have to do that. You should. Make an oiler. Yeah, I, I've yeah. wanted to forever. Yeah. It would be really simple to do. You just gravity feed and you can just have it work and mount on any machine. Oh, I just and, love that. Yeah, that would be very cool. I'm going to keep, I want to do some yes, reading on these machines, time. but take look, we've time. got several more machines back in here as well that we can uh, continue to uh, explore. So over in this area, we've got some more machine tools. These are going to represent around 1820 to 1880 as, it's a, as we're approaching our industrial revolution in the USA. They got some really interesting machines here. So this is a screw slotting machine. I've never seen one before. It's the first time. And you can see on the back side, you have a series of slitting saw cutters mounted on that arbor. You can see it's run off of a pulley there of a belt. It's going to be driving it. It looks to me like all of your screws get stuck in those holes there or screwed in. And as this is rotating, the cutters are rotating. As these come around, it's cutting the slots in the screw heads. And then they come and they get dropped off right here. It would be really interesting to see this operating like that. It's so cool. I've never seen one. All right, and I think this guy right here is a wood copying machine. Let's come around here. Wood copying lathe. That is so cool. Yeah, that is beautiful. So use it to make uh, exact copies of patterns, forms like an ax handle, a shoe last, or a rifle stock. And then over here is a rifling machine. Looks like a little lathe, but it's a rifling machine. So you can see these are some of the early machines that represent gun making in America. That's so beautiful. The machines, those old machines are beautiful. And we got some examples of uh, some of the guns that were produced here in this cabinet. You got a, a Colt right there. Look at the different gun parts. I remember uh, learning some of the early history of gun making. You know, machinery kind of came about because people needed yeah. to create lots of accurate parts that were the same size right. instead of hand making each individual part like a screw in order to make them all accurate and function right on the battlefield. Very cool. A lot of really cool machines in here. Let's move over here and see some more of these guys. This says it's a belt sander. Never seen one like this before, you but see it the is. way that it's painted. I yeah. mean, it's just gorgeous. Yep, you can see the pinstriping on it. I need to I need to get my light on here because it's hard to see this. Here. Is that CF Pentagill? Does that help you any? Yes. Pentagill, yeah, CF Pentagill Machinery Company. Amesbury, Massachusetts. Very cool. Yeah, look at the look at the wood pulleys. Awesome. This guy, I'm not sure what exactly it is, but we're gonna find out. Look at those wooden beams they use to, to build that. So what is this? This is a retining machine. Machine was used to finish the tenons on the wheels spokes before they were driven into the hub. It wasn't hard to learn this machine, but you still had to be very careful. It was simple, repetitious, and typical for the work that made the American system so productive and profitable. Mortising machine. So that's, uh, that's a wagon wheel hub on there. Look at the wooden, the wooden crankshaft on that. And this handle here was used to operate it. Hub mortising machine.
There you go, there's an example of your wagon wheel hubs. And this right here looks like a classic bandsaw. J.A. Fay. I've seen quite a few Fay machines over, over my years. They built a lot of them. A lot of people really love these old bandsaws because of how beautifully they were casted and created, like the wheels. That's a very common, that's a very common way to create wheels of all types back in the day when they were all casted. They had the, the wavy spoke pattern on them. I know that you are really excited about this, but that is the chair right there. Oh, that's the chair. The Lincoln chair. It's it's hard it's to right there. So it's hard to focus on all this stuff because just behind you, you have other really interesting that's things over the there, Lincoln like the Lincoln chair. chair. We saw the Rosa Parks bus earlier. Yes. We're gonna get all that in. Did you go in here? Though? I haven't been in it. So what is okay. that? It's a shoe shop. You it's have a shoe to. shop. It's wow. Really cool. That is cool. All right. So much greatness here. Let's keep moving. All right. So here's some more machine tools. Now these are your planers. Yes. right here see it looks similar to the milling machine that we first saw look at the side look at the bird on there oh that's so I cool love it. that is a very small planner but specifically used for making small parts did you see that what is oh uh, brown and sharp that's yeah. really cool yep So, okay, so this one's a Putnam. Maybe both of them are. Finchburg, Massachusetts. Back there you have the metal lathe. That's a Chamberlain, Boston Mass. And this is a gear cutter. You see all the holes, all the holes on this wheel here. That's for indexing. However many positions you need to index it to cut your gears. Drill press. I've never seen a column like that underneath the drill press. That is beautiful. Look at what they say about machinists here. What does it say? They were an elite bunch. Yes. Their skills were irreplaceable. Yes, they were. Look at this surface gauge right there. Look how beautiful that is wow I've found a couple posts like that for uh, surface gauges I show in the steam engine that's going to be running the uh, running the shop and I'd like to make a model of the shop sometime yep of your shop Wow see that little uh, there's like a little vice ah, that's so, cute. <laughs> <laughs> so this large machine earlier that I wasn't exactly sure what it was this is a wood planer right here. So just like a metal planer, it was just used to uh, plane wood smooth. Up to 18 foot long, this one, this one was used for. All right, so this is gonna be the shoe shop right here. Let's see if we can take a peek at this. It's gonna be a little dark. Let me uh, see if I can help that any. This looks like the uh, the boiler. You guys can't see that, I, I apologize, but they just got it really dark in here. But we can see in the workshop. Let me turn that off. That doesn't blow it out. There we go. What a wonderful recreation of a, uh, of a shoe shop. These are some watchmaking machines over here on this side. Very similar to the same type of machines that I run, lathes, mills, you know, machine tools. These are just built on a very, very small scale for making very small, intricate parts for watches. I like the picture of the factory. Pretty neat stuff, huh? Extremely. They do have the plaques here, so 
You got the lathe. That's that guy right there. See how small it is? It's adorable. Pinion cutter, a screw machine, a drill press. So there's the drill press in the back right there. That is the milling machine right there. Milling machine and a gear cutter. So very small gear cutter. This is your this is your gear cutter right there. Well-preserved machines right there. So this has been really awesome going through here and seeing all of the uh, vintage machines. But there's uh, so much more to see everywhere we look in here. There's so much great stuff to see, just like uh, wood, you know, wood making section over there for furniture. So we're going to continue to work our way through. And if I find some more really cool uh, industrial metal related things in the museum, we'll add that to the video here for you guys. And here we are. This is the other section I was hoping to find. Steam Powers American Industry. 1840 to 1880 is what this represents. Just yes. like the machine tools, <laughs> the steam engines are just as beautifully made yes, and created. Everything was done. It was utilitarian, but it was done in an elegant, pretty way. They want to design everything beautifully. They took a lot of pride in what they made. They absolutely did. What they made it on. So imagine the machines that you had to run to turn this guy right yeah. here. You have big lays, big vertical lays, and the one behind it there is even bigger. So if you guys get a chance to go to the uh, Sule Steam Festival in Meridian, Mississippi in November, that's where you need to go. There is so many of these machines on display running that you can see, you can walk right up like this and see all these guys running. So I'm still here at this steam engine. This was really interesting because I didn't realize, I thought this was all just steam engine, but it says this is a uh, portable cylinder boring machine that's part of this steam engine setup right here. This is a portable steam engine that was running off the end of it right here. Taking a worn steam cylinder back to the shop for reboring was time consuming and expensive. This machine did the job on the spot, saving time and money. So, okay, now I know what I'm looking at here. It's this right here, this attachment is what this plaque is talking about. You can see the plates, they're bolted onto the end of the, um, the steam engine right here. So that's your cylinder inside there. And you see your cutter. But so this was set up to go in there and uh, line bore this cylinder wall. And that's what this steam engine is doing right here. It's running this. I finally figured out this is the attachment on the end of the steam engine right okay, here. Okay, okay. This, all this right here. Yeah. So that they can rebore the cylinder wall when it gets worn. That is cool. This is, this, this is your piston. I just noticed that. So there's your yeah. piston and your rod right there. So this is what's inside there. Moving, this rod comes through and attaches back there. Maybe we'll be able to see it run. They have a demonstration today at 1.30. Look at the flywheel on this guy. You see the pit. That is the one of the most beautiful things I have ever seen. It's huge. It really is. And to be this close to it, it's awesome. bearing journals and the oilers to oil the bearing. Beautiful. All right, so tell us what you discovered over here. This is a model machine shop line shaft. It How absolutely cool is. is that? 
Look at all the miniatures. All right, so you have the planer, the shaper, the milling machine, Look the at lathe, little shaper. the drill press, and the grinding wheel back there. Look at that. All being run by the big steam engine right here. So this engine right here is an example of what was what it was used for to run an entire factory, an entire machine shop. So you can see the big flywheel and the flat belt coming up to the line shafts up top. One, one line shaft would jump across to run other line shafts. They were all connected together by belts. And each machine was being, would be put underneath one of the line shafts and a flat belt running down to it to operate it. This is an amazing model right here. And then See, you also says, have the... It says factory of Edison. Oh, there. okay, yeah. Well, what I was gonna point out, so that's the boiler back here. So this is, that's the boiler that's creating the steam Laboratory. for the, uh, the steam engine right there. That little shaper is the cutest thing I've ever seen. I want one. I want one I for my too. desk. I do too. I want one for my desk. <laughs> <laughs> I've never made a miniature before, but that would be, uh, that would be fun. Yeah, I think, I think we should. That is cool. Another one of their uh, steam engines on exhibit right here. They said this one was used to uh, pa uh, power the uh, sawmill in Niles, Michigan, and it later ran the machine shops of a Michigan Central Railroad in Michigan City, Indiana. It is the oldest American engine in the exhibit. This is the boiler and the steam engine there. All right, we've got a lot more to see. It just keeps going and going. Look, they have a uh, hardware and tool section over there on the wall. Amazing. This is a portable steam engine. Portable steam engine. How cool is that? Look, they got it on a skid so they can set this wherever they need to. Kind of like a uh, traction engine. There were so many manufacturers in Massachusetts. Lawrence, Massachusetts. That's why we need to go there. Absolutely. All right, so what is this guy? What does it say? Okay, hold on. I don't know. Look at the uh, step key driving the hub there for the pulley, or the flywheel, I mean, I'm sorry. These what does pictures, it say? They're, the pictures are great. Did it come off it's of a the ship? It's a stationary steam engine. It's just Gothic style, which is gorgeous. I, okay. I think it looks like a church. It was just a it's different just style, so, so this beautiful. is more of a vertical style then. But, like, look at this. You know, I mean, that's a great photo. I mean, rendering. Turning large shafts on lathes at Novelty Ironworks in 1851. And then that one is the picture of the Novelty Ironworks. Wow. There it is right there. Sorry about the shadow. It's hard to get out of them here. Okay, so I was wrong. I was thinking this is off of a boat. So no, this is just more of a vertical style steam engine that was used for many different things. It says that it's a, a gothic it's a gothic style. But it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. New Haven Manufacturing. Back behind this guy, you got 
This is the uh, Edison, Edison General Electric Company. <laughs> I can never pronounce that properly. 200 kilowatt dynamo. It's nice that they've got it rotating so you can, uh, you can see how it actually operated. I think it was Schenectady, Sh Schenectady. It's a model of the Edison Central Station. So I believe this is one of the Edison DC generators. There's the plaque for it right there I'm talking about. It. I remember we learned a lot about this, you know, because he was he was trying to promote DC electric for the country and it wasn't very efficient because it it, it required a lot of power generation stations like that to, to generate power for long distances. And uh, alternated current, AC, ended up winning it over and that's what we use is uh, AC power. So the uh, exhibit in this area is kind of going from, we started with our steam power, now we're starting to get into our more electrical powered systems over here, electrical power generation systems. And they have a lot of stuff here on demonstration as well electrical area from 1880 to 1980 or 1990 I'm sorry so just over 100 years is what this is going to show here I don't even know where to show you guys that I'm definitely going to go check out the uh, hardware section over there water turbine for generating electric power I've never got to see inside one of these guys until now. So the water would flow through here, turn the turbines, which would turn the generator back there to create electricity. So this is one of your steam engines uh, for a ship or a boat right here, marine steam engine. I got a model of one right there. You can see the uh, the prop representing what the steam engine was used to drive. You can get it right here. Let's go a little further back into the power generation era area back here. Everywhere you look, there's so much cool stuff. You see that over here? Look at this over here. Wow. We'll come back and revisit that. I wanna finish this section over here. So this may have something to do with um, the power that was generated at the Ford plant. A major and comprehensive replacement and upgrade to the electrical infrastructure servicing the Henry Ford was completed in 2011 thanks to the exceptional generosity of the following donors. The Highland Park plant engine generator built in 1912 and used at Ford's Highland Park plant in Highland Park, Michigan from 1912 to 1930. 14, I'm sorry, 4,000 kilowatt DC. That's the generator. The engine was 6,000 horsepower and operated at 80 RPM. So this guy was one of the, uh, the power generators used at the Ford plant, Henry Ford. We've got a really uh, informative plaque here. He had nine of these guys built. And years later, he had this one moved to where it's at right now for the museum. And uh, these guys are what helped build the Model T and other vehicles after it. Let's take a walk around this guy. Wow. 
Wow, that is incredible. Combination gas steam engine built by the Hooven Ovens Rentschler Company, Hamilton, Ohio, for the Ford Motor Company in Detroit. I like how they're numbered. That one says 11, this one's number 12. There's your cam right there. There's your generator. Look at the flywheel. Absolutely incredible. Uh, it's hard to see on video right there. We're looking at the uh, crankshaft and these, uh, I love the uh, journals that supported these during the uh, linear motion. Got another window down there where you can see inside here. But we'll come over here, you can see the crankshaft that I'm talking about. I think I'm saying that wrong. This is the uh, connecting rod. This is the crankshaft right here. Oh, look, they got a uh, look at this uh, picture back here showing all of them. So you can see, I believe that's that's all nine, three, six, nine. Yep. Bridge cranes there to uh, pick them up and move them. Awesome. Yeah, here's a better look at one of those connecting rods that we were just looking at right there. Another look at the connecting rod. Now let's take a peek at the flywheel. Even the columns is part of the design of this. It's incredible how many cast iron columns are holding this up. And I heard one of the other uh, museum members telling somebody that where we were standing up here, that was actually ground level here. This was underneath ground level. Check out all of the uh, wrenches. I'm sure these were uh, used for the engine during its time. And the uh, museum has cleaned them up and polished them. They look like they're industrial chrome plated. They are absolutely gorgeous. All right, so I missed this earlier, talking about the industrial revolution area. I just, uh, I kind of missed it. And we got to walk in other places, but I wanted to see this. The first modern power source. 1796. The Watt Canal pumping engine. These are very, very early, very early engines. Well, at least it's nice and quiet back here. It is. A grasshopper engine.
You know, I don't think I saw over here. I like how they did this. Yeah, it's really cool. So you could, so you can see it. Look at this lathe. Did you did you notice that? What year is that one? Eighteen sixteen. The uh, I believe that's Moods Lay, Precision Lathe. Clock and instrument maker. So a lot of the parts are uh, brass. another lathe over here yep moots lathe production lathe about 1804 that's interesting the way that the ways are made all right so now i see what this lathe was uh, used for what was invented for it was for making lead screws so you can see the screw back there and the carriage is following that i, I got it and then so you install your shaft on these centers here and then your tool goes up there on the cross slide, but it, it's, it's following that screw and cutting the one that you want to cut on this. They put this plaque right in front of the lathe here. <laughs> I mean, look at this, it's right in front of it. There's probably you, not a ton of people that come in here that know exactly what this is either. So. But I do and I want to see it. I know. <laughs> so anyway, we'll get you a little better shot right here. But that is pretty cool. This is the first time that I have seen one of these. And this is a very, very early machine. The early 1800s. Very cool. A few more engines to enjoy. That's an electric motor. Kerosene engine. Hot air engine. And a water motor. This has been great. Better than great. So while we're over here, let's go ahead and check out the hardware and tool section. These are hardware display cabinets and they're, they're very popular to collect now and they bring a lot of money. And a lot of companies use these to display their tools and hardware. And so let me come down here and show you the uh, one that I like the most out of these is this guy right here. This is for stare it. Every tool in there is a stare it. How cool it would be to go to a hardware store and you know you want to get some machinist tools and so you come up to the display here and you go, yep, I want that set of dividers right there. You know, I want this uh, combination square. You got your number 98 precision level right there. If you could go back in time, I would like go see like Cleopatra, but you would probably go. <laughs> I want to go to the hardware stores <laughs> and the machine shops. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah, this is great right here. So a lot of let's let's go down so you guys can see the rest of it. So you got the uh, you know the wood chisels, drill bits for wood, screwdrivers, locks, more hand tools. This is uh, like metalsmith type tools right here, and then more uh, general hardware. 
the L. Miller & Son Hardware and Tools. Abby wants us to go see the chair. It is, uh, it's kind of unbelievable to yeah, that this is here. To yeah. actually see this here. Wow. So I did read, and I don't know if it says it here, but it's not blood on the chair. It is just the, like the oil from people's hair sitting there, I think. Oh yeah, the like oil. That. So okay. it looks like blood, but it's not. That is incredible. So what does it say? Upholstery seat, rocking chair. Yep, President Lincoln was assassinated in this chair. That is just amazing. I cannot believe this is here. I know, it's, it's really unbelievable. Yeah. And this is a great example of how awesome this museum is. Yes. They've got so many things here yes. like this on display that for- That really represents our country, for sure. It represents the history of our country yeah. and everything that we have been through up until now. We made our way over to the presidential cars we're gonna check these guys out. I guessed right on this one. I said Reagan, and she says he that's what it. it is. And I thought that the um, the uh, JFK car is here. I think we'll see. Seventy-two Lincoln. There's a whole other section in there we're going to go into for uh, American cars. This is it. This is the one? Mm -hmm. Yep. John F. Kennedy. Wow. That's crazy. Yep. All right, so uh, we've made it back here to the railroad section. Look at this monster of an engine. Wow. You really cannot capture this, you know? 1941 Allegheny locomotive. That's incredible. I'm just going to take a walk down so you guys can kind of see this. There's a bunch of them here to this uh, left side as well. I'll try to get some of that in the video. This is Lima uh, Locomotive Works up there. I have never been uh, next to one of these. It is absolutely massive. Nineteen forty one. Yep. You were here before I left. Get a quick shot of the inside of the. Uh... Wow. It's so dark in here, it's hard to yeah, see it. It is. It's incredible, though. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh. Massive. 
Oh, oh look at you. <laughs> <laughs> got all the levers. Yeah. There's your window you can look out it of. It still has that smell. Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, our visit at the Henry Ford Museum has uh, come to an end. This place is amazing. It's spectacular. There's so many great machines and machinery in there that go way back to, you know, 1700s that, that was amazing to be able to see. So all the machine tools, that was fabulous. All the power generation equipment that they had in there was simply amazing to see. Uh, the automotive section, the railroad section, all amazing. It was really incredible, really great place to see. I'd recommend anybody that has any kind of interest in this, come down here and check this out. I would, I would suggest to give yourself two days to come and enjoy this museum. There's so much to see in there, especially if you want to stop and read a lot of things. It's going to take up a lot of time. We've been here for nearly seven hours now, and we had to rush through the, uh, the furniture section and the generational section just so we could kind of see it. Before we get out of here but uh, you know have a couple days so you can come and enjoy this place and we did find out that the greenfield village over there that's that's what our plan was for was for tomorrow it's closed it's seasonal i had no idea that it was already closed that was my fault for not looking it up and seeing uh, but they told they said you can walk through there but nothing is open so none of the activities are happening you can't go in and see the edison workshop none of that stuff so that's a total disappointment that we can't see that but Maybe in the future, we'll have another trip up here that we can see it. But really is a great museum. I'd highly suggest coming and checking this out. I truly enjoyed my visit here. And hopefully you enjoyed uh, the video that I got to try to represent of some of the exhibits that they have here in the Henry Ford Museum. Hopefully you enjoyed, we'll see you later.